Hey there, I want to talk to you guys about how to become an inroad agent. Many tax preparers reach out to me and they're always asking, Carla, how can I level up my tax business? How can I become more knowledgeable about income taxes? How can I really reach the peak in my industry? And my recommendation is for you to become an inroad agent. Many of you may be familiar with me, but for those who are not, I am Carla Dennis. I have been a licensed and road agent for 30 plus years now, believe it or not. And when I became an inroad agent, it was a lot more difficult. It was a lot harder. But today I want to give you the five easy steps to becoming an enrolled agent. I get so excited about this because I am proud to have EA, not CPA, behind my name. And the reason why is if you choose to take that journey to become an enrolled agent, you just leveled up and you are going to send your practice, your business, and your income to the moon. And who does not want that? Endless opportunities. So stick with me, buckle up, make sure you're ready because I am going to show you what you need to do. So the very first thing I'm going to do is hop over to my iPad because I'm going to jot down notes for you so that you will know what you need to do. So let's jump right over to the iPad and get going. So the first step is to become an enrolled agent. You have to study, 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 study. And some of you may be thinking, Carla, why do I need to study? I already know how to do taxes. No doubt. Or you probably wouldn't even be here with me, right? But here's the thing. When you are wanting to become an enrolled agent, you're going to really have to study because there's going to be like little particular things that are going to be on that exam that you are going to want to know about. So I want to make sure that I give you some great avenues for being able to study. The first thing that you can do is you can order IRS publication number 17 and number 334. These publications are the publication on individual tax and the publication on business taxes. Now, these publications, they're free. So I want to take all the excuses out of it. You can get these publications for free. You can start studying. And I do mean you want to go cover to cover in each publication. Now, if you're like me, I'm impatient. I want to fast forward things and I want to condense my material. So if you want some material that's specifically designated for you to pass the enrolled agent exam, I am going to give you my best recommendation. And my best recommendation, and I don't get paid for this recommendation, but I like to use what I call and what they call, um, let's get it right here, fast forward academy. Fast forward academy has inroad agent study material. As a matter of fact, I am going to pull it up because I want you to see what I'm talking about. Right here, as you can see right here on my screen, Fast Forward Academy is a company that actually puts together test material for various types of exams. They put together test material for the Enroad Agent exam. When my sons were studying for the EA exam, I put them on the Fast Forward Academy. Why Fast Forward Academy? Because there's a lot out there. 
The reason why I like Fast Forward Academy, there's a community of people you can ask questions of, number one. Number two, you can do it at your own pace. Some material you may move through faster. Some material you may move through slower. It allows you to go at your own pace. I like courses that allow me to move at my own pace. But when I'm stuck, I can go to the community and ask questions. The third thing that Fast Forward Academy does, it will give you testing material according to your strength and weaknesses. So for example, when you're using Fast Forward Academy's material, and if you're struggling with something like individuals, and maybe you're struggling with how to calculate the qualified business income deduction, or you're struggling with how to calculate depreciation, Fast Forward Academy will continue to give you questions using AI, artificial intelligence. It's monitoring your checkpoints, meaning as you go through the material, it literally gives you checkpoints to check your learning. And I like that. I don't like getting all the way to the end and doing an exam and not knowing if I'm even grasping any of the material that I have already learned. So Fast Forward Academy is an excellent tool to utilize. It's not that expensive. Let's click on the pricing options right here. It says C pricing options, and let's see what they come up with. So you can get the Fast Forward Academy bundle, which gives you the smart bundle, plus the boot camp, where they will actually do like a three-day intensive right before the exam. That's really good if you need that extra learning where you wanna be on with a group of people. And you could get that for $6.29. You can also just get the EA Smart Bundle and that's where you get the physical book and you get the computer generated learning. I personally love the Smart Bundle because the Smart Bundle really gives you the book and the computer learning. And I'm a book person, I love the computer, but for those of us that are studying right the day of the exam, we're in our cars, we need that extra study time, you may not have Wi-Fi available, so you can take the book anywhere. The other option is just to have the EA online course that doesn't even give you the book in a hard copy, but it gives you the book online. So I actually prefer the second option here. And this investment that you're gonna put into yourself to acquire this material is going to be a small price to pay that is going to pay you literally dividends back over time. So my choice is Fast Forward Academy, you can also order the individual book, Publication 17 from IRS, Publication 334. Those are inexpensive ways to get the material that you're gonna need in order to study for the Enroad Agent Exam. So the very first thing to do is study. You may ask me, well, Carla, how long should I study for prior to taking the exam? That's really gonna depend on you. So let's say if you are just going to get the free study material from IRS and you're not going to be able to really kind of gauge how much you're learning, I would say to give yourself at least a good three to four weeks to study the individual section, a good three to four weeks to study the business section. If you're gonna purchase some learning material like Fast Forward Academy, and I'm sure there's others out there, you're gonna be able to pace yourself differently because you're gonna know how well you're doing on the exams. So number one is you have to study. The second thing that you need to do in order to pass the enrolled agent exam is that number two, 
is you're going to have to obtain a P10 number, a P10. A P10 is a preparer tax identification number, a preparer tax identification number. And you're going to be able to obtain this preparer tax identification number by going to irs.gov and apply for a P10 number. Now, I just want to tell you that in order to get a P10 number, you have to have filed a tax return at least once in your lifetime. The reason why I say that is because my youngest son, Carrington, applied for his P10 and he hadn't filed a tax return yet because he had been studying for his enrolled agent exam for quite a while. And then he needed to file an individual tax return under his name. And he was still sitting on his parents' actual tax return. So you need to be a tax filer in order to apply for a P10. But it's really simple to get that P10. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to show you. We can go right to irs.gov. Let's go to irs.gov right now. And let's type in on the search bar P10. And let's see what we get. It should come right up. Okay, prepare tax identification number. Notice it pops up right here. When I click here, it walks you through literally how to obtain your P10. That's very important. Now, I want to make sure that you realize that when you are applying to get that P10, that you need to actually view a checklist right here. So let's click on that checklist that talks about renewal because once you get it, you got to renew it every single year. What's important is to know that your P10 enrollment period opens literally about October 15th and it closes December 31st opens October 15th, closes December 31st. So if you're looking to get your P10 number because you want to sit for the road agent exam, recognize that if you get one October 1st, it's going to expire at the end of the year. It expires every single year. And in order to get a new one, you would have to reapply. So recognize the dates. That's very important in order for you to become an enrolled agent. Now, once you obtain your study material, you studied, you now have gotten your tax prepare ID number where they keep track of all licensed tax preparers, you have to register to take the exam to become an enrolled agent. And when you register to take the exam to become an enrolled agent, you're going to register to take that exam through ProMetrics. ProMetrics, and I'm going to pull that up in just a second, for you guys, ProMetrics is an actual place that proctors exams. And when I say proctor exams, when you go in to take that exam, there is going to be a lot of, when you go in to take that exam, ProMetrics, let me get it up right for you guys here. When you go in to take that exam for ProMetrics, there is going to be a lot of people that are taking that um, exam. And 
there's going to be people taking law exams, medical exams, because Prometrics is a place you go to register to take the exam and they proctor the exams, meaning that you have to show your identification when you walk through the door. You can only come in with like a pencil, like it's monitored. So that's a really big deal. Let's get that up here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna pull up Prometrics. So let me jump over here so you guys can see what I am talking about. Okay, so I wanna make sure Prometrics that you guys have that written down because the spelling on that can be a little funky on the spelling, but I wanna make sure you guys have the spelling right. So I'm gonna write this down for you guys. Pro metric okay this is a company that is going to do the registrations for the enrolled agent exam we call it c exam special enrollment exam you want to register to take this exam and when you register to take this exam here's the thing you are going to need to register and the exam is three parts you don't have to take all three parts at one time you can take individual business and representation separately on different dates when i was taking the exam that was not an option you had to register and you had to take all of it on two days and it was eight hours there was four parts when i was taking it now the way it works it's three parts and so i want to go over that with you so that you guys know the three parts so you have number one you have the individual part. And this is going to be dealing with all individual information. This is going to cover Schedule A, so proprietorships. It's gonna cover depreciation, home write-offs, sales of property, everything affecting individual taxes. The second part, is going to be the business section. Everything as it pertains to business. It's gonna cover S corporations, C corporations. It's gonna cover LLCs. All the business aspects of the enrolled agent exam is in the business section. The third section of the enrolled agent exam deals with representation. This deals with how to represent people before IRS, audits, all the tax procedure, all the penalties, that's section three. Now, people have asked me, Carla, what's the hardest part of the enrolled agent exam? I think it depends on where your experience currently lies. For me personally, when I was taking the enrolled agent exam, I thought that the individual section of the enrolled agent exam was the hardest part because the individual section covers everything. The business section adds some additional elements, but do not think just because you know how to do individual tax returns right now that passing that individual section is going to be a slam dunk. Absolutely not. Study, 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 and study those little nuances that you might not be thinking of. And things like how to calculate basis on the sale of property, different depreciation methods, really lean into that so that you can pass it 
the first time. I always like to say one shot, one kill. If I'm going to study for something, I need to hit it the first time. But do not be discouraged if you do not do it the very first time. You will get it. Okay, so that's the very first couple of things that you need to do. You got to study, number one. Number two, acquire your prepared tax identification number. Number three, you have to register for the exam. Now, because I know you're going to pass that exam, the fourth thing that you need to do and let's jump back over to the iPad and talk about the fourth thing that you need to do. You need to apply to become an enrolled agent. Once you pass the exam, you literally have to ask IRS by filing form 23 to allow you to be an enrolled agent. You literally have to go back to IRS and apply and fill out the application for enrollment. And so we can hop over, let's get back over here and let's see if we can find the application online. Oh, it's actually going to be form 23 and apply to become an enrolled agent. Let's see what happens when we put that in. Form 23, application for enrollment to practice before the IRS is right here as you guys can see that, right? And so when you click on application for enrollment, and let's just click it here. Here's the application for enrollment. So it asks you for some basic stuff. It's asking you for your social security number, your date of birth, your full legal name. But notice down here, it asks for your current address. It also asks right here, and this is so important. Do you have an employer identification number? Do you have an EIN number and another business name? Why do you think they're going to ask you that? Beware, ding, ding, ding they are going to do a compliance check. You will not be admitted to be an enrolled agent if you have outstanding tax filing requirements. I wanna make sure that I explain this to you guys very clearly. If you're going to apply to become an enrolled agent and you are, you have to make sure your house is in order. Make sure you're current on your tax filings. Make sure if you owe IRS, you are in a payment plan. You cannot be out of compliance at all. Why? Because you are applying for one of the highest statuses of a tax preparer. You are applying to be the cream of the crop. You have to be in compliance. So if you have any entities, any LLCs, any entities you formed years ago and you never filed the tax return, you got to file the returns and get them all caught up because you will not be admitted to enroll if you don't have that. And trust me, that will be very embarrassing. So when you fill out your application, Form 23, and you pay that fee, which I believe the fee today is $67, you want to make sure that all of your hard work is going to get recognized and you're going to get accepted to become an enrolled agent. So you want to make certain that you are in compliance, my friends, because they will do a compliance check. Many of you ask me, Carla, if I become an enrolled agent, 
Will I get audited? Maybe. The reason why I say that is you're going to be held to a higher standard. So you want to make sure that your house is in order. Now, does becoming an enrolled agent mean you're going to get audited? No. Compliance check, yes. But when they're looking at your return, if something doesn't look right, could they flag you for an audit? Yes. So make certain your house is in order. And then once you have done those things, you will be admitted to practice before IRS. You will become an enrolled agent, one of the most coveted licenses as a tax preparer. I love it. And you will elevate yourself and your career and your money making bandwidth to the highest level. And I will tell you that I am so proud that I am an enrolled agent and that I can operate in all 50 states because the sky is the limit. So you want to make sure that you can get it done. Now, what's really, really important, once you become an enrolled agent, you got to make sure you do three things at all times. Always be in integrity and do the right thing because your license depends on it. Number two, keep up with your continued education because once you become an enrolled agent, you have to stay abreast of the tax law changes. Always, always, always. And number three, every year, you have to renew your prepared tax identification number. I honestly forgot. Yeah, I forgot to do it one year and they are not playing around. They will boot you out the system so quickly. So flag it October 1. Make sure that you're on it. Make sure you're getting your continued education in so that you are not cramming at the end of the year trying to do it. I want you to like, comment, and I want you to subscribe to my channel. Why? Because I want to make sure that you follow me on your journey as I give you tips to become an enrolled agent.